To fill in the gaps between the two cables on the tap side, remove both backing strips from a length of red sealant and roll it up into short pieces. Fill in the gaps by pushing the sealant into all of the open spaces. Next, wrap the red sealant around both cables as shown, covering up the packed sealant. Make sure you wrap the sealant one half inch onto the black red dual layer tube and push it into all gaps to eliminate air space. On the single cable side of the splice, wrap red sealant strips onto the cable semicon building the diameter up to the diameter of the tubes. Continue to wrap the sealant one half inch onto the black and red dual layer tube. At this point, you'll complete the grounding. If one or both of your tap side cables are metallic tape shield, lay the ground braid across the shield with approximately four inches extending away from the center of the splice as shown. Attach the braid to the shield by placing two wraps of the spring clamp over the braid. Fold the braid back and continue to wrap the remaining clamp over the braid. Finally, tighten the clamp, secure it with copper foil tape, and trim any excess braid. To apply the shielding mesh, half lap the mesh over the entire length of the outer tube and tie off with a half hitch. Prior to installing the final outer wraparound, remove the cable tie and properly clean and abrade all cable jackets for approximately six inches with an approved solvent. Remove or tape over any sharp points to prevent puncture of the wraparound. Apply two more wraps of red sealant at the jacket cutback on the single cable side of the splice as shown. This helps to ensure a watertight seal. Finally, remove the backing from the wraparound sealing sleeve and center the sleeve over the splice. Slide the retention clip onto the butt rails. Slide the channels toward the center from each end of the sleeve and over the retention clip. A minimum of one half inch should be extended beyond the edges of the sleeve. If the channel fit is tight, push the sleeve up from the bottom and down from the top while sliding on the channel. This causes the rails to flatten together and prevents the channels from binding during installation. Check to make sure the flap is not pinched between the rails. On the tap end of the splice, Insert the breakout clip between the two cables so that it clips together the walls of the wraparound sleeve. Bind the cables together again approximately three inches from the end of the sleeve. Now you are ready to start shrinking. First, evenly preheat along both sides of the rail channel area until this area begins to shrink. To achieve uniform heating, move the flame back and forth from one side of the channel to the other while moving the flame along the entire length of the channel, as demonstrated here, until the sleeve starts to shrink. Preheating is complete when the sleeve begins to shrink. This technique will help to assure a properly preheated rail and channel area. Next, start at the center of the sleeve and work toward each end, completely shrinking the sleeve as you move. Apply heat until the sleeve is fully shrunk and the heat-sensitive green paint is completely converted to black. Continue heating the rail channel area for another five seconds per foot. A white line should be visible in the channel gaps indicating sufficient heating. This completes our installation of the HVSY1520S 15KV Y splice for polymeric cable. Be sure to allow the splice to cool before moving or placing in service. By following the written installation instructions and the information contained in this video, you can install a durable, watertight splice. Some key points to remember when installing a Y splice are, be sure to fill in the entire connector area with SRM to properly fill air voids. Do not over grease the insulating profile. Be sure to heat your insulating tubes enough to soften the insulating profile underneath. When shrinking the wraparound, be sure to properly preheat the channel with a back and forth motion to help ensure a proper outer seal. If you have any questions regarding the installation of Raychem's 15 kV Y splices for either polymeric or PILC cables, please contact your local Raychem representative or call 1-800-327-6996. 
At the beginning of the video, we promised to show you the oil seal preparations needed when installing the HVSY 1580D series Y splice kits. Except for the oil seal, the installation of the connector and the ground, all other steps for the PILK kit are identical to the polymeric kit. With PILK cables, you need to begin by securing your oil seal before you can begin installing the main tubings. Mark your lead sheath at one inch from the cutback and make sure your lead sheath is free from lead oxide and the paper insulation is free from conductive materials. Next, remove the printed backing strip from one side of a long strip of yellow stress relief mastic, otherwise known as SRM. Then roll the SRM up with the paper side facing out. This makes it easier to apply and prevents the material from sticking to itself. Apply the SRM as shown at the lead sheath cutback. Now place the oil barrier tube, or OBT, over the cable as shown. Using a reduced flame, shrink the OBT in place starting at the lead sheath cutback, being careful not to nick the tubes with the end of the torch. Inspect the installed oil barrier tube for a smooth wrinkle-free surface. If needed, reheat to smooth any wrinkled areas. The only other differences between the kits come with the soldered connector and the completion of grounding, which are covered in depth in our installation instruction. Thank you again for watching. Once again, please call 1-800-327-6996 if you have any questions regarding these or any other Raychem cable accessories.